And there we go. When the ring is done, just before we move it from the jig, just go around and straighten up any non-vertical legs and try and make them a little bit neater. Just makes the next step that bit easier. So now it's time to start assembling some of these pieces together. So we've got our completed circuit board here. And we're actually looking at what will be become uh, will become the underneath as all the LED rings stack up from this side here. So we've got one of our LED rings here, and so we've got to feed this into these little holes. So I think there's there's no real right or wrong way to to start going about this. What I'm going to try and do basically is just start just where I can and just start it. Try and get a few in in place. Sort of angling this a bit so you can see, hopefully. It's just a case of then gotten three or four in and then just keep a little bit of pressure on these two fingers, finger and thumb here while we just get more in. All the while just keeping that pressure where you started. As you can see, they start to poke through and they will hopefully start to grip, but I'm just going to keep my finger in place there. And once it's all in, you can give it all a bit of a press down. As you can see, this first ring, because of the spacing on the circuit board, this first ring gets splayed out a little bit. But subsequent rings hopefully will We'll just come down and just be straight up from here. So that's probably one of the fiddlier ones to try and get all of these leads in. You can feel like you're going round in circles on this one. But you may be wondering, how am I going to space these uh, evenly up the height of this? Well, what I've done is I've created a little 3D design and then printed it on the 3D printer. And the idea is that this can easily just slip in and it kind of, it's a tapered slot so it, it kind of self tightens onto the, the circuit board. And so we'll be able to then push down the ring until it's seated onto this. And it's probably going to be a bit of a faff because in order to get the next row on you have to take this spacer off. I printed three of these spacers, spacers to get it even, all hopefully all the way around. But I think what I'm going to have to do is tack in two or three points uh, on each ring as we go and then be just taking these brackets on and off each time. I think that's going to be the the or the best way for doing this at the moment. So as you can see those three can go in and then these can be squeezed down and I can tack them in place just where they've come through. Now, if I wanted, at this point, I can go in and check in between these soldered joints. So we've got here and here. So if I was to put this in, say, here, 
I could then get in between and tacked in, which I think is what I will do. Just to try and get as, uh, as good a foundation as possible. So it's just a case of keep doing that all the way around until I've got these all in, uh, in place. And then I'll bring you back as we add the next layer. So I've just brought you in a bit closer here. Uh, there's just a couple of, of these joints that you just need to be careful with because of their proximity uh, to other components. So if you look here, either side of this switch, there's two of the LED contacts that come through quite close to the switch. It's not too bad on here, but if I bring you around to here, the USB connector, which is the power connector, but you've got one LED leg here, another one on this side. It'd be very easy to accidentally create a solder bridge and short across onto this case. I haven't checked, but this uh, shield around here may well be grounded, in which case it would short out whichever or both of these that were uh, accidentally bridging onto it. So just have to be careful with those, uh, especially around the USB connector and this switch here. So that's the first layer done and hopefully fairly much at a consistent height. Next, we'll start with trying to get to this next layer put into place. And so this is where our little 3D printed brackets come in handy, just to be able to space these. So that gives a some form of even spacing and I'll do the same again with this. I'm just going to tack the leads where these spacers are and then I can move the spacers around. I won't go around as many times as I did with uh, the initial layer, but uh, just to be able to get these as straight as possible. If I bring this up to the side, you can, you can just see, let's see if we can get this. So we just basically have to tack on these leads to the same place, sort of like that. It's one of those jobs where you need about six hands. Let's see if that will hold itself in that position. And a good job with just tacking one lead. It means that you can make an adjustment should it be needed. So I've just tinned both of these legs. That did its job and I held it at the right spacing. We can do the same on this. Prop that up and we'll just in the legs just to make it easier for ourselves because once they're tinned it's easy enough to reflow the more accurate you have been in building these the easier this step will become. Where you just go around and make sure that you haven't, well, that I haven't got these slightly wrong. They seem to be all matching up to a certain extent anyway. So 
So now what I will do is I shall move each of these across just a little bit and then we can repeat that same function and hopefully this will ensure that we get a, a fairly even need to find something else to prop on the other side of this As you can see, there is a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of movement. And because of that splaying of the first layer, it just means that this second layer can be a little bit more tricky. Hopefully subsequent layers will go a little bit easier, but we shall see. And so there we go. Now as you can see these aren't exactly ruler straight, uh, but you can sort of gently tweak and move this whole structure. It's not that rigid, but for me it's good enough for what it is. So now once we've finished all of those rings, what we need to do is connect these pads here, J2, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to J8. These need to be connected. J1 goes onto this common ring here. And J2 onto this next one, three, four, and so on, all the way up. And they have provided some very questionable and very thin wire to do this with. And so that's what we shall do now. So solid core wire, it seems anyway. I can't see strands. So we shall start at the beginning. J1. As you can see, the wire is thin enough that the sheath and all can come through if you're just not careful. So this can be a bit tricky. In times past, I have used a little clothes peg just to hold the wire in place, but I can't seem to find it, so we shall have to do it the harder way. So we're having 16 fingers and, and four hands really helps. So I will actually thread this up the inside, but just for soldering onto the board, you do it outside. And what I've tended to do before uh, on my big tower that I did, if you look somewhere, I'll put a, a link to that. I basically cut it longer than it needs to be. It only needs to connect onto this first ring, but I will cut it at the height of the next ring. And that just leaves a little bit spare that we're able to just tidy the wire up. Now you saw I held the, the sheath with pliers. Uh, with very short wires like this, and you're stripping them just using cutters, it's very easy to pull the whole of the insulation off. So that's why I did that. This is where it gets a little fiddly. And there we go. First one done. The rest are just lather, rinse, repeat.
there we go, there's the first four done. So they'll be able to be grouped together just to tidy them up and uh, cable tie them just nice and neat. And the other four are coming from over here, so we'll probably choose one of these uprights here to uh, tie th them to. At the moment it looks slightly messy, those wires, but before we tidy these up, let's just check out to see whether it does actually light up and work as expected or have I completely wired it up wrong. <laughs> 